Hello boys and girls and welcome back to Creation Laboratory, where science and the Bible work together to illustrate truths of our marvelous creator. Today, we'll be looking at a little concept called humility. And to help me with our humble experiment, I have my humble assistant, Emma. Say hello to everyone at home, Emma. Hello. Very good. Well, our experiment, while quite simple, does require some items you may not necessarily have at home. If you wish to try this experiment for yourselves, you will need to prepare in advance. Emma, let the children at home know what they need. Of course. We have two boards, two funnels, we have two books, and we have tape and a flat surface. Well, thank you so much, Emma. Here in the lab, we are using two by four wooden planks. Uh, the key is that whatever you use, they must be equal in height and have a completely smooth edge along the entire length of the board. Emma, the first thing I will need you to do is to tape the two funnels together so that the wide ends are perfectly aligned. Of course. And while you're doing that, I want to ask you a question. When you hear the word humility or humble, what do you think of? I think of Jesus. Mm, that's a very good answer. We'll get to that later. Humility is the quality or state of not thinking you're better than other people. The opposite of humility is a prideful heart, one that boasts that they are better than others. It is very common for us as human beings to fall into this trap of boastful pride, thinking we are of greater worth than those around us. Perhaps you are an excellent athlete, a musician, or you're very good at math or some other school subjects. Maybe you're a brilliant scientist. Maybe you are behaved better than your friends. When you see that we excel in a certain area, it is very easy to begin to think that you are way more important or way more valuable than others. But what we need to remember is that each of us has gifts and talents in other areas. Some excel in one thing while others excel in another. And those strengths do not change the fact that God loves all people and considers each person very, very important. It also helps us remember that those traits we are so proud of were given to us by God. As the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 31, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. In other words, instead of boasting about ourselves, we should praise God for the gifts he has given us and the work he has done in our lives. God greatly desires that we have a humble heart, and our experiment will help to illustrate God's response to true humility. Emma, how did your funnel taping assignment go? It went great. Well, very good. All right, then. Let us continue to prepare our experiment. Well, now that we have taped our two funnels together with the wide ends lined up, we are going to make a ramp with our boards. Emma, place the books side by side in front of you and place the end of each board on the books with these other ends resting on the table. Of course. Well, nicely done. Now we need to make a V with the two boards by keeping the ends of the table close together but moving the ends of the books so that they are spread apart. Well done. Well, the boards are now at a higher elevation on the book side than the ends which are on the table. All right, Emma, it is time for our hypothesis. When we place the funnels at the bottom of the ramp, what do you think will happen? I think it might... I think it might fly across the room, but I think that might be a little weird. <laughs> it would be weird. That would be very dangerous, actually. Yes. <laughs> um, well, what about you at home? What do you think will happen, if anything, uh, to the funnels when we placed at the bottom of the ramp? Okay, Emma. It is time to conduct our experiment. In a moment, what you will do is place the funnels so that the wide ends are taped together, rest between the pieces of wood near the bottom of our ramp. Hold them there until I give you the signal. Then you will release the funnels and we will see what happens. Okay, go ahead and hold the funnels in their place. Okay. And release. Whoa, that's not what I was expecting. Well, 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 would you look at that? The funnels are now resting on the boards at the higher end of the ramp. Are we defying gravity? No, our experiment is just an optical illusion, but it does give us a good picture of what God does for those who are humble. He lifts them up. 
The Bible says this in several passages of Scripture. For example, in Psalm 147, verse 6, he says, The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. And again, in the New Testament, James 4.10, he says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Jesus gives us a great example of the humble being lifted up in a parable he told. You see, Jesus noticed that many Jews, when invited to a party, wanted to sit near the head of the table because it was a place of great honor. But Jesus said that they should instead sit far from the head of the table, for they will be more greatly honored when the host asks them to move higher up. He concludes with this verse found in Luke 14, 11, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So you see, God honors those who do not place themselves above others. Humility does not mean that we treat ourselves badly, but instead we love our neighbors as ourselves, just like the Bible says. And finally, we see the ultimate example of humility in Jesus himself. Paul explains this beautifully in Philippians chapter 2. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus was willing to leave heaven and become human in order to save us from the penalty of our sins. He did this by dying on the cross as our substitute. There is no greater example of humility than that. The passage goes on to say that God the Father lifted up Jesus so that he will have greater honor than any other. And God also lifts us up when we show humility in our lives. Well, Emma, were we correct in our hypothesis? Not really, no. <laughs> no, we were pretty far off. Yeah. But what about you, boys and girls? Were you correct in your hypothesis? And what is your conclusion? Remember that everyone is of great worth to God. We should live humble lives, caring for others, and God will lift us up as a result. Well. That'll be all for today. Thank you, Emma, so much for assisting me. You're welcome. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and send us videos of your experiments at home on Instagram, tagged at CCGSKids. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye! Bye!